Shalom. Today, uh, we are reading right now some of the Over here, I'll just mention a few interesting points. <coughs> the twin surah of Surah Qasas is Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf is about how the Bani Israel came into Egypt. And then Qasas, which is the story about Musa is about how they left back to, from Egypt back to Palestine. Also, you'll find interesting, just as a side point, it's something of interest, is that whenever any of the surahs start with Ta as one of its haruf al-muqatta'at, like Ta-ha, for example, or in this case, it is Ta seen Mim. Generally, whenever there's Ta in the surah, in the beginning, as a haruf al-muqatta'at, it's a story about Musa, والسلام, and about magic and things of this nature. Um, some scholars have even pointed out Ta even actually looks like uh, you know when the snake has that circle and it's standing up straight? So the thaw actually looks like that, and if you know that part of the, uh, the, huh? Part of the asa was when he threw the, the asa, the snakes came out from there. Allahu alam, but this is something interesting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, thaw seen me. No one knows what this means except Allah, and according to another Yawaya, Allah is messenger. Even Jibreel asked the Prophet, did you understand what this means? And he's, the Prophet said, ah, he understood. But Jibreel himself apparently didn't understand what it meant. Tilka ayatul kitab al-mubin. These are signs, a book uh, of signs. They're very, very clear. By the way, one thing I want to share with you, I know this is about Musa alayhi salam, but it, you know the word ayah is used in the Quran a lot. A lot, right? In philosophy, there is a subject called semiotics. Semiotics is the study of science. Because the way our brain works, the way our brain works is, our brain works by, by the idea of science. Like if you, there's not, almost nothing if we see except we understand it as a sign. Like you see a McDonald's sign, right? You, when you're on a computer, you see the same sign, so you save it. So science is how our brain works. Everything uh, points to something other than itself. When you look at keys, you don't think iron. You think of the function of the key, which is to open a door. Okay. So anyway, it's very interesting, extremely, extremely interesting from a, from a psychological and a philosophical perspective that Quran insists on using the word sign, 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 because everything is a sign, right? Um, <clears throat> memory has to do with sign. Something reminds you of something other than itself. Like I was talking yesterday, you see a pen, and it reminds you of the person who gave you the pen, right? So the same thing is, this universe is a sign. This whole universe itself, the sun and the moon, everything is pointing to something, right, other than itself. And that is who? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And messengers of Allah come to remind us, to help us read the universe. Messengers come to help us confirm what does all this mean? What is it all pointing towards? Right? Anyway. So, Tilka Ayatul Kitab al Mubin, these are signs of a book that are very, very clear. Musa. And we get we will reveal to you, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Minaba i Musa from the events of Musa, from the events that happened with Prophet Musa alayhi wa and Fir'aun. So what happened between Fir'aun and Musa? Bil Haq in truth. For a people that will believe. Why? Because believers are either going to be a persecuted, they're either going to be what? Persecuted or they have established justice. If believers don't establish justice, then they're going to be persecuted. Like, who in the world today is the most persecuted group? Uh, it, it is a healing for Muslims to acknowledge that, that we are the most persecuted group in the world. Look at Palestine, look at Kashmir, look at uh, Rohingya, look at Burma, look at what's happening to the Muslims in China. Right? The most persecuted, the most uh, antagonized, the most, you know, uh, hurt, uh, group that is targeted is the Muslims. Anyway, نَتْرُوَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ مُوسَى وَفِرْعَوْنَ بِالْحَقِّ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ This is the ayah that actually I wanted to share with you because this is a great political science ayah about political science. And we find this happening most clearly and as, as a actually concept, uh, meaning it was a, 
It, meaning people may have done it in the past, but it was not a formulated concept until the British Empire. And that is Allah says, Inna Fir'aun ala fil ard. Fir'aun wanted to be ala fil ard. Ala means high. He wanted to have power. He wanted to have arrogance. Okay, ala fil ard. Wa ja'ala, in order to have control of everyone around him, how did he have control? Ja'ala ahlaha shi'an. He divided, he, he divided the people under him into little groups. Okay? He divided the people into him what? Into little groups. And by divide, what is that called? Divide and divide and conquer. This is exactly what Jaram did. But he did it not only in, in the external sense, he did it in the internal sense. You see, Qarun, for example, who is Qarun? Qarun was a Bani Israeli. But he was what Malcolm X calls the house slave. You know the house slave? He's the one who loves the master. And he's the one the master sends out, make sure the field workers are doing their job. Okay? And he's the one that when the master says, I'm sick, the, 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 house, the house slave who's with the slave, the master in the house, he's the one, we sick, master. We're, we're both sick, right, when the master is sick. He's the one that wants to be like the master. Right? And usually what happens is, and there's some very interesting books on this, the, the people that oppress you, you usually want to copy them the most. And this is exactly what happened with Pharaoh, the people of Musa That even though they were the oppressors of Musa, right? They were the oppressors of Musa, what happened is they ended up being like, they wanted to be like the people of Egypt. They wanted the food of the people of Egypt. They wanted to worship the Catholic, the people of Egypt. They wanted to follow the oppressors who were oppressing them to the point where Allah describes They would kill, not kill, do ziba, zabiha. You know, Allah could have said he would, that they would kill their children, their men, and let their women go. But it doesn't, yuzabihuna means it made, they made it halal, they made it legalized. They legalize the killing of the boys of that society. But still, even after all this oppression, there's always a group of the people that are oppressed that want to follow the oppressor. Okay? You find this, for example, in the aristocrats of Pakistan, all the Nawabs. Okay? They were the most, these Nawabs that, uh, that uh, basically, basically took control of Pakistan later on, they were kissing the feet of the British. Okay? And they were taking the taxes and, and, and uh, uh, hurting who? The Muslims. The locals. So, and, and what happens is, is that, so, so what is my point? My point is, divide and conquer, both not just in the external sense, like as what the British Empire did, but also in the internal sense. You create Qaruns, house slaves, and you use those house slaves, and you make them rich and fat, and you use those same people to go against the populace. That, that you're against, okay? So Allah says, إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنِ عَلَىٰ فِي الْأَرْجِ عَلَىٰ أَحْلَهَا شِيْعًا لِيَسْتَدْعِفُوا طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُ So that he would be able to oppress a group of them. Okay? Some of them he makes into aristocrats, he makes them rich, like Qarun, and then he uses those people to oppress the rest of them. Right? إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنِ عَلَىٰ فِي الْأَرْجِ عَلَىٰ أَحْلَهَا شِيْعًا لِيَسْطَضْعِفُوا طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُ يُذَبِّهُنَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They would do zabiha for their children وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَهُمْ And let their women go. Women are cheap labor. Even today, you know, women that generally work in any job get paid less than a man that works the same job. And women are also better, more loyal workers, just in general. You know, because guys think differently. شِعَنْ لِيَسْتَضِيفُوا طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّهُنَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُنَ نِسَاءَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And he was amongst the people that created what? Fasad. By his divide and conquer rule, the, the internal policies that he had. If you look at the polarization of America today, or you look at the po internal polarization and the divide that has happened between the Republican and the Democrat Party and all the other uh, types of internal polarization, all of this is to make sure in the end, what? The elite stays the elite. And that uh, the, the populist vote is actually controlled. So you basically have a two-party dictatorship in the end of the day. But Allah wants to change things. They have a plan. Allah has a plan. So Allah says, And we wanted to give a favor to the people that were oppressed in the land. So today, we're oppressed. But to tomorrow, if Allah wants, He can favor us and switch the 
situation. It's very easily switchable because it's just a house of cards that can fall, fall very easily. One, how much two minutes? Do I have time is up? Okay, so let me just finish this ayah. And we wanted to make Bani Israel the Aima, the leaders. And we wanted them to become the inheritors of Egypt and all of which happened later on in the time of Daud and the other times. So we wanted them to become the inheritors of the world. So this is something very interesting in Quran uh, that needs to be further reasoned. You could do a whole thesis on this how Fir'aun was on top, you can look at the historical aspects of it, and how he controlled people by dividing people. You can have a whole thesis on this. Yes, <laughs>